In this clip, we're going to take our knowledge of sketching basic shapes and graph a piecewise function and then answer some pretty elementary questions about that piecewise function. So you'll notice, to start, this particular piecewise function has three pieces. The first of which is a parabola that has been shifted five units to the left and four units down. So the translation point would be negative five, negative four. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe we'll just put this as a little reminder. And then one, two, three, four. I'll put that there as a reminder. So I'm going to put a dot or a point right here. So this is negative five, negative four. Labeling is really important, especially once we see the questions that come later. It's going to be nice to have that there. Now, this parabola opens up. However, it's limited. It's not a, a parabola in its full entirety. It's limited because of this restriction. So we're only looking at it for those x's that are less than or equal to negative 3. So what I think I'm going to do is look at when x equals negative 3 and see what happens. When I plug that in, I get negative 3 plus 5, which is 2. 2 squared is 4, and 4 minus 4 is 0. So when I plug in negative 3, I get 0, and I'm going to make that a closed circle because there's an equal sign there. So I know the parabola is going to go like this, and I also know that parabolas are symmetric. So if it moved two points over to the right, it's also going to move two points over to the left. And that could just be a little bit of a time saver to know that. So this parabola is going to open up like this, and then this one's going to go up like that, but it's, this one's going to keep going. And I kind of missed the, the dot there, so I'll make this bigger just to fudge it. This, this electronic pen is a little awkward. So there is the piece of the parabola that I was supposed to draw. And this point right here is negative 7, and this point right here is negative 3. Now, the second piece, and maybe I'll do the second piece in a different color. The second piece here is the basic shape of the praying mantis. And this is shifted 0 to the right and 0 up. So that means there's going to be a point 0, 0. And the point for a praying mantis or opposing boomerang is the location of the horizontal and vertical asymptotes crossing. So there's going to be a vertical asymptote here and a horizontal asymptote here. And I'm just going to do a portion because I'm only looking at a portion because of the restriction. So I'm going to put in negative 3. And if I put a negative 3 in for x, I end up getting 1 ninth. So negative 3 brings me to 1 ninth, and it's an open circle. So it's going to be right above. We'll call that 1 ninth. And if I plug in positive 3, I also get 1 ninth. And I also know that the, this graph is going to be symmetric over the y-axis, so whatever it does on one side, it's going to do to the other. Now, for added accuracy, I could add in a couple of other points, maybe negative 1 and 1. And 1 is sent to 1, and negative 1 is also sent to 1. So I think with those collection of points, I could maybe estimate what this is going to look like. And again, you have to give me a little bit of a break here with this pen. Oh man, that's embarrassing, but whatever. So this non-point, if you will, is 3, 1 ninth. It's not actually a point on the graph, so I'm labeling this non-point. And again, it's not a point because there's no equal sign there. It's just a boundary. So now I'm going to pick a third color, just to confuse the situation even more, and we'll look at this third piece right here. This third piece is that of a wing with a translation point of 3, 2. Sorry, 3 to the right and 2 up. So there is 3, this is 2, and that's going to be a closed circle this time. And the basic shape of a wing is, just for quick review, up and to the right. Now I could pick some other points to make it more accurate, but I don't even know if it really matters. Um, if I wanted one other point, I would probably want to pick something that's easy to work with. So maybe if I made a little xy chart here, uh, a square root that's easy to take, <clears throat> a number that's easy to take the square root of is maybe 4. So if I made x be 7, 7 minus 3 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. So now I have 7, 4. Let's see if, let's see if my, um, my rough sketch gets that point. 
three, four, five, six, seven, and then one, two, three, four is here. So yeah, that actually looks pretty good. So this point seven four, and maybe maybe that would have been a good idea to do from the beginning. Just get another point for added accuracy. Okay. So here we have our piecewise function. It's made of three pieces. The portion of the parabola, the portion of the praying mantis, and the portion, well, it's actually the entire wing, so fine. Now let's consider the domain. The domain is a visual sweep from left to right. Now the graph lives to the left as indicated by the blue, and then the graph lives where the purple is, except that there is this little portion where it's not defined right at x equals zero. And then it goes on to the green and it goes to the right forever. So it seems to me that the domain is going to be everything except for zero. So we're going to say negative infinity to zero exclusive and then zero all the way to positive infinity. And once again, <clears throat> the reason I'm excluding zero is because there's an asymptote there. <clears throat> and if I plug in zero for x, which would fall into this category for this piece, you're going to get an undefined situation because you have zero in the denominator. Now the range is a visual sweep from bottom to top. Now you'll notice if you look down at the bottom of this graph, there's nothing going on. Well, for which y value does the graph start to exist? As I climb and I climb and I climb, the lowest y value that I see is negative four. And there's a closed circle there, so I'm going to make that inclusive. And then let's see. This guy climbs and it climbs and it climbs and climbs, climbs, climbs forever. So in terms of the y values, there's going to be y values up forever. Now what gets a little confusing is that if you look at a different piece, there are places where there are no y values. Like the purple, there are no y, y values down here. And for the green, there are no y values below, um, below what, whatever this point. What was this point? Um, this was 3, 2. But we're looking at this whole thing collectively. So even though there's no points below here for the green, there are y values that are down here. So from negative 4 to infinity. Now, to, to finish, we're going to evaluate the function at three different places. f of 2. Now, the confusion for piecewise functions is to, is to figure out which piece to plug it into. Now, to do that, you look at the restriction. 2 falls between negative 3 and 3, so I'm going to plug it in to this guy. 1 over 2 squared is 1 fourth. So the answer to this is 1 fourth. Negative 3 would fall into the first piece, because that's where it's allowed to exist. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. I think we did that problem earlier. f of 0. 0 is between negative 3 and 3 again, so it's going to be the middle piece and if I let x equal 0, we get a situation that's undefined, and that's where the asymptote is. So I'm going to write und, or I'll just write the whole word undefined. Some people write no solution, um, and I guess that's okay too. Anyway, this was an example of graphing a piecewise function and entering some or answering some questions about it. At this point, you should be able to go to your packet and do any problems that correspond with clip number four.